back to the channel and if you are new here my name is Ricky and in today's video I want to take you through my one year progression my one year journey through film photography as the title suggests as this video suggests this is about my one year journey through film photography and in this video i want to touch on a little bit of my progression a little bit of how i got into analog photography how i got into the world of film and some of the things that have kept me coming back to the world of film and the world of analog photography so i want to start this video off from the beginning with how i even got into film photography and that is with this thing right here this little point and shoot Rico ZF35 rangefinder camera. This camera was actually my mom's very first 35 millimeter camera that she got when she was maybe 18, 19 years old. And I'll give it to her. She kept it in amazing condition. And this camera got passed down to me when we were moving up to Queensland. We discovered it, rediscovered it. I never really thought about analog photography or film really too much before getting this camera. I kind of always just thought it was inferior to digital and why would you ever shoot film when you've got digital cameras that can do all these amazing things? But seeing this camera and kind of holding it in my hand, there was, I don't know, this cool uniqueness to how simple analog cameras are. It was like, there's no screens, there's barely any buttons. I don't know. It was just something about it really drew me in. And obviously I took the camera and I didn't really think much of it for a little while. It was a good probably six months, maybe more that I sat on this camera and just had it sitting on my shelves as more of just a, an ornament or a, a little decorative piece. But eventually I sort of said to myself, you know what, like, let's give a go to film photography and let's see what all the hype or the fuss is about. I decided, you know what? Let's buy a roll of 35 millimeter film and let's go out and take some photos on this Ricoh ZF35 rangefinder and let's see what the hype is about. So I ended up going down to my local camera store and I picked up a three pack of Ultramax. I set out to take some photos and I didn't know much about film photography. I understood the basics of photography, the way ISO, aperture, shutter speed works, understood about framing and positioning. So it's not like I went into film photography completely naked, completely, you know, uneducated or with no understanding of basic principles of photography. But when it came to film, I didn't understand what different film stocks produce, different, you know, levels of grain, different colors, different, you know, uh, the amount of detail you can kind of get out of just even different bodies, like something like a cheap range finder like this compared to something like a more expensive SLR camera with good glass. Like I didn't understand all the little minute details that went into making a good film photo. And this camera by no means is anything special in terms of its quality or its performance, but it's also nothing bad. It's got a little, what is it, 40 millimeter lens, I believe on it, goes down to 2.8. So, I mean, it's pretty decent all in all. And I'll pop some of the photos up of the screen, which I took on this camera. I got to admit, from the very first frame I ever took, there was something about it that just felt special. It felt like in that moment when you were taking that photo, you were much more in tune, relaxed, locked in. When it comes to digital photography, it's very easy to just spray and pray and have your camera on burst mode and you just 
hundred photos of one subject hoping that one will turn out, but when it comes to film, there was a sense of slowness that came over me and you know, you really find yourself slowing down and looking at things around you. You you almost envision, well for me anyways, almost envision the photo before taking it, looking at things like light, looking at things like composition, looking at things, you know, colors even differently. You start to look at colors in a different way where it's digital you go that might make a good photo you take a photo of it you throw it into Lightroom and you adjust like 50,000 sliders before it becomes what you see on Instagram but with film no there is a sense of like you gotta nail it in camera what you see the final image is 95% of what you envisioned in your mind prior to taking it and I think that that aspect is what really drew me to film photography and I felt that from the very first photo I took on this little Ricoh ZF35. And from that first roll, I was hooked. I was hooked on the process of taking film photos. I was hooked on the look, the nostalgic feel to it. The process is mainly really what grabbed me, that sense to slow down when you're out and about, to really look at things, to really look at what you're taking photos of. And there's also like a cost associated to that slowdown because every time you pull the trigger on a 35 millimeter or a film camera, an analog camera, there is a dollar sign associated with that shutter, with that little shutter sound. You know, you need to buy the film, you need to develop the film and there is cost associated to all that. So it does in a way make you slow down and really pick your shots, especially if you're shooting something like 120, you're only getting like 10 shots a, a roll. So that cost point also makes you kind of slow down and really pick what you want to take photos of and that process it really resonated with me I felt in a way that it made me a better photographer because I started looking at my images differently I started looking at what I was taking photos of in a way that these are scenes they're straight from a movie or there's an emotion or there's a meaning to them or there's there's something about that image that when I took it I had a certain feeling or maybe I could see a certain play or a certain scene or something playing out in my mind that when I took that photo, I was like, in this moment, this is what this means. And I took, you know, I take the photo. Whereas in digital, I feel it's more just like, that looks cool, take a photo of it. That looks cool, take a photo of it. That looks cool. And you get home and you just see what you've got. It's kind of like pot luck in a way. And that might not be for everyone, but it certainly was the case for me. And that is why I certainly feel that the process of film photography, that process of slowing down and looking at your subjects and looking at your composition and your lighting and dialing in exposure and all the little steps, the double and triple checks before you click the shutter, I think is what resonated with me and what kept me coming back to film. But I knew that I could only go so far on this little rangefinder so I ended up picking up my second camera, which was a Ricoh XR10. What I did find though with 35mm cameras and film cameras in general is that the body of the camera is not really the determining factor to the quality of photo you're going to get. It really comes down to the glass and the lens that is on that camera. Body-wise, you can virtually go any body. It's the quality of glass. And I found that immediately from stepping up from something like this, which is a rangefinder, fixed focal length rangefinder, which is not, you know, it's not a bad quality glass on it, but it's not great either. But going into an SLR camera with much better quality lenses, I noticed that my photos significantly improved in not even just detail, but contrast and the colors looked better the photos looked sharper 
the grain was better everything about them just felt and looked much more cleaner if that makes sense going on from my second roll of film like i said i spiraled into a a course of buying a whole bunch of cameras and i sort of then got my heart set on canon which is where i've kind of stuck to at the moment and i ended up picking up a canon ae1 program which had a 50 mil 1.8 lens on it and that is where i started really getting into the craft of film photography picked up an external light meter a Siconic l308x where i then started learning more about metering learning more about understanding light and in this process is where i really find that i developed more of a skill as a photographer all these little tiny quirks that you do with film it really did help me become a better photographer and my progression in film is clear throughout my photos you can see that i start off taking sort of photos of anything and i believe that my work starts to progress into taking photos of things that I think portray a scene or a mood or an emotion and gotta itch my nose man that for me has just made me fall in love even more with film photography and it's these emotions that I associate with all the photos that I take it's this connection that I have every time I pull the trigger and that's not saying that every time you take a photo it's gonna be a banger there are loads that <laughs> Are just shit photos you know we all hit and miss but you know they say you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take so that is kind of in a nutshell my journey my experience with film i've shot it for the last year pretty much exclusively i, I don't think i've shot more than a handful of digital photos pretty much every photo i've posted every photo i've taken is virtually done on analog through a whole bunch of different cameras which you've seen throughout this video and at the moment my main camera that i'm shooting with well two cameras that i'm shooting with is a canon f1 with a 50 mil 1.4 lens and a canon and a canon eos 500 n with a 50 mil 1.4 lens so i've kind of stuck to these two cameras at the moment that i'm really comfortable with and i just I can't see myself straying away from film. Like I've said, it's made me a better photographer. It's made me appreciate the art of photography, the process of photography. And there is a very clear difference between digital and analog, even though I do think digital is superior in the sense where the ability and the flexibility you have with your photos and the technology behind what you're shooting with is far obviously superior than film but there is something nostalgic and something fun about taking photos with analog cameras and at the end of the day if you're not having fun what is the point of going out if you're just doing it for likes or you're just doing it for clout or you're just doing it for whatever why are you really doing it for me, I take photos for the pure enjoyment, for the pure fun of it. And with these videos, I aim to perhaps give a little bit more of an insight into my thoughts behind photography and hopefully maybe inspire and maybe teach some of you who are watching these videos a little bit more about analog photography and maybe also inspire you to go out and try analog photography. So with that said, I will wrap this video up here. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you took something away from it. Hope you enjoyed some of the photos I placed up on the screen. This video is the segue into more photography videos. I do want to make videos on specific film stocks, specific cameras, specific locations that I visit, and you can definitely expect more analog photography videos coming in the future. But this video was really just a way for me to get some thoughts out on camera, a way for me to share with you why i got into film photography and yeah excited for more videos to come hope you enjoyed it hope you're having a great day and i will catch you in the next video peace